Hey, what is up, guys? Thanks for tuning in to another episode. Now, you all probably know this flag, the flag of Spain. But what about this flag? And what makes this flag different from this flag? And that flag different from this flag? Allow me to explain. Barcelona, Spain. One of the most visited cities in the world, and for good reason. While walking on the streets during my study abroad program, what I quickly realized that was very unique to Barcelona was the unbelievable amount of flags, ribbons, and signs that hung from balconies, buildings, and streets. Here's what it all means. Catalonia is an autonomous region in northeastern Spain that has its own language, history, cuisine, and cultural activities. They are unique from the rest of the country, thus giving them a unique identity and one of the many reasons for the independence movement. These are the official flags, the flag of Spain and the official flag of Catalonia. These are also the only flags that are allowed on official government buildings. This is the flag of the Catalan independence movement's left wing party, and this is the flag of the Catalan independence movement's right wing party. What's similar between these two flags is the star. The star on the Catalan flag represents independence and was taken after countries who gained independence like the United States and Cuba. All of these signs and flags are mainly a result of the independence referendum that took place on October 1st, 2017. Did you vote in the referendum in 2017? And if so, can you tell me what that experience was like for you? Uh, yes, uh, I did. I voted in the 1st October 2017 referendum, of course, uh, because uh, it was a very important uh, moment in Catalan history. The referendum was held as part of a pledge by pro-independence parties in Catalonia who were elected back in 2015. However, when the election eventually took place, it was deemed illegal by the Spanish government and police were ordered to block polling stations and to take politicians into custody. Today, many of them are still in jail and that is why you will see many signs hanging from balconies asking the government to free the Catalan political prisoners. Well, basically for me, uh, it was clear then that Spain didn't know how to deal with it, at least in a political way. So why does Catalonia want independence? So I guess the main difference is the history. All throughout history, Spain and Catalonia has, have had a difficult relationship. We need to um, look the history of Catalonia. The region of Catalonia enjoyed large amounts of autonomy as an independent nation from the 12th to the 18th centuries under the Aragon and Castilian kingdoms. It wasn't until 1714 in the War of Spanish Succession in which things began to change. In the first days of the, 90, the 18th century with a, with a war um, between two uh, crowns in Europe, Habsburg uh, from Austria and other is the, um, Bo the Bourbons in, from France and finally won the Bourbons with the figure of uh, Philip V uh, and Catalonia lost the rights after war, finished in the 1714. The, was day, the last day of the battle was 9-11-1714 uh, um, and in this moment uh, start a moment um, that the Spanish crown uh, in the center of the Iberian Peninsula in Madrid, tried to control everything here. The Catalan was banned, the uh, Catalan institution was persecuted, etc. The significance of 9 11 17 14 can be seen at FC Barcelona soccer matches. During the 17th minute 14 second, fans will begin to chant Independencia all around the stadium, as I witnessed here. Finally, in the 19th century, uh, the politician movement in Catalonia start to grow again. Uh, first, the idea was influence uh, in the Spanish politicians, but little by little appeared the idea we need to create our own parties in Catalonia. Catalan culture and identity, however, came under threat during the dictatorships of Primo de Rivera in the 1920s and Francisco Franco from the 1930s to 1975. During this time, the use of the Catalan language was banned. Despite the new democracy after Franco's death, there continue to be problems between Catalonia and Spain. 
nowadays the, the government um, don't accept the diversity of Spain. They don't protect, for example, the, co the Catalan culture, the Catalan language, uh, the Catalan laws, some Catalan rights, and people here uh, finally understand um, we need uh, to move to another situation. Do you think Catalonia should be a nation separate from Spain? If so, why? Uh, in the current situation, I think it should be. Because we vote in a very different way. So when you look at the maps after an election, um, you can see that most of Spain has like a color from one party. And then you can see Catalonia has a very different color and then sometimes the Basque country. So for me, that means something. That at least we think in a slightly different way not all people who live in Catalonia, however, support independence. Take my host mom Nanny, for example, who is originally from Madrid, who, but has lived in Barcelona for close to half a century and has seen the recent events unfold. Porque dependen también del gobierno central. Ellos cogen un montón de dinero anual. Si son tan independientes, ¿por qué lo cogen? Que se solucionen ellos la vida y vivan de lo suyo. Creo que todos nos necesitamos. Lo que no pueden hacer es distinguir. Y el que no quiere ser independentista es el malo. Y el que sí, no. Y se creen una raza superior, cosa que no lo son. Entonces, por esa razón no me gusta. I really enjoyed learning about both sides of the independence movement, but what I was able to experience in the city was very limited due to only being there for three weeks. Because of this, I interviewed Bri, who is from Minnesota, but has been living in Catalonia and other parts of Spain for quite some time now. She offered her perspectives. Well, I'm from St. Cloud, Minnesota, and I came here for the first time four years ago, and I studied here. And the election had not taken place yet. It was just, there was still that momentum and that Catalan spirit when I came here. I mean, there always has been. But um, it wasn't until, you know, last year or a year and a half ago where things really started taking off. But as an American, I never felt unsafe relating to the tension between the Catalan people and the Spanish people and the governments. I never felt like I was in danger or that there would be riots, there would, you know, be people using guns or weapons, which you hear a lot about in news from the United States. The Catalan people have a culture that they've had for hundreds of years. And in many ways, they are absolutely justified in what they believe. They have their own language. They, they were here bef before, you know, the whole Spanish kingdom took place. So, you know, in many ways it's justified, but they're always peaceful about the way they present themselves, the way they protest. I also lived in Sevilla for nine months last year. You know, most people that I've come into contact with outside of Catalonia do not enjoy the Catalan people very much. And when I asked why, some of my coworkers down south, they said that they are very spoiled here. The people here have so much money and they just keep wanting more and they want more. And because when people here pay their taxes, it gets distributed evenly across different areas of Spain. It doesn't come back evenly distributed to them. So of course, the people down south are gonna say, that's not fair, they make so much money, I want the money to come to my town, I need help here. And so they see them as very um, elite, too good for everyone else, that kind of thing. Mm. I think it's important to, uh, as an outsider, to kind of see both sides. But I've obviously spent more time here, and I've obviously seen how they protest, and I have a lot of respect for the Catalan people in that sense. If Catalonia were to become independent, what would the first few years of Catalonia independence look like? Well, this is one of the things that most politicians have not responded yet because I don't think anybody really knows. I think that for the first the first couple of years maybe it would be not beneficial because right now all people from the European Union can come to Barcelona and they don't need a visa and everything is easy. Whereas if Catalonia was not part of that community, then we would have problems, at least at the beginning. I don't know how they would figure it out in the future, but the first couple of years, of course, it would not be beneficial. Of course, no one really knows what the future holds for the Catalan independence movement. But independent or not, Catalan people will always be there to welcome visitors from all over the world.
One important thing that we have to keep in mind is um, Catalonia can be an independent state, but uh, the beach, the food, the Sagrada Familia don't disappear with independence. So these things are still being there. The question is what happened the first years with the independence? Um, obviously, it will be probably a complicated situation, but finally, I'm really sure after a period of time, um, Catalonia can be a very powerful state and obviously this will be thanks to uh, the force of Barcelona, the, 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 the magnetism that this city has around the world, in every place in the world. Nowadays, Barcelona is very well new and it's a dream for a lot of people come to my city and, and enjoy Barcelona. So uh, this don't disappear because people, we are still, uh, still being here and we are happy to be uh, the, the have guests and, and have people here and explain the city. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I can honestly say I really enjoyed filming this video and getting to know these amazing people. And I hope you enjoyed learning more about Catalonia, the independence movement, and the different perspectives involved. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time.